We are Buckeye Precious Plastic, a nonprofit student led recycling initiative here at The Ohio State University. We engage students with the recycling process from collection to production. We are proud to be part of the Buckeye family because OC has many zero waste initiatives. Unfortunately, some plastic items still fall through the gaps of our recycling systems, either on campus or within the greater Columbus community. This plastic waste still has value, yet due to the economics of waste collection, this value is not realized and most plastic waste is dumped at Central Ohio's landfills. In 2016, only 46% of the 2.1 million tons of waste generated in Franklin County was recycled. Nearly 70% of the material landfilled could have been repurposed according to the Solid Waste Authority of Central Ohio. More often than not, this plastic waste ends up entering our environment and causing major harm. These pictures demonstrate just some of the negative impacts plastic waste has on animals. We knew we had to do something. When we came across the Precious Plastic community, we were inspired to create valuable products from plastic waste and capture the plastic falling through our recycling systems. This international community has created so many interesting and unique products from plastic waste, ranging from flower pots to tote bags to 3D filament and many more. Since 2013, they've inspired over a thousand groups from around the world to join the movement to combat plastic pollution. Let's hear from the founder, Dave Hawkins. Learned there are many different types of plastic out there. And the ones that you can recycle basically all work according to the same principle. You need some heating and some pressure to mold it into something new. And that's pretty much the basic start of the entire plastic industry. They all work according to these principles. But they have a lot of variation. So they have extrusion molding, injection molding, blow molding. And by making a different combination of this technique, they can make a whole range of different products. And our machines are based on these techniques as well, only simplified and made with local tools and materials so you can build them yourself. And that's exactly what we did. We started BPP back in March of 2018. Using Precious Plastics Map, we realized we would be the first group within Central Ohio and that there are plenty of community members interested in joining the Precious Plastic movement. We got to work getting our team of six people together and learning the basics of welding and metalworking by building the first recycling machine, the compression oven. After attending events like the Involvement Fair and Time for Change Week, our group grew and grew. We eventually partnered with the Department of Integrated Systems Engineering during the summer of 2019 to better implement our mission of combating plastic pollution. We are very grateful for this partnership and the opportunities it has presented us in growing and engaging new members. Now let's learn about the activities and recycling machines that you can work on by joining BPP. BPP's Outreach and Service Group volunteers at many river cleanups with local organizations like Flow, Friends of the Lower Olentangy Watershed. We educate on plastic pollution with presentations. Here we're presenting for the campus group Fisher Cares. We also educate on plastic pollution through live demos. Here you can see our plastic rope demo. Two liter bottles are cut into thin strands. We then weave these together to form plastic rope. We welcome new ideas for educational demos with plastic. We currently collect plastic from our members and campus events with aspirations to eventually collect plastic from the cleanup events or local businesses. After collection, the plastic is separated by type and then washed. We're in the process of designing a washing system for the collected plastic. Once the plastic is clean, we sort it by color and prepare for shredding. So this here is our industrial shredding machine in the basement of the ISC building Baker, which we use to shred plastic. We have our own shredder we built as well, but we can just go through twice as fast. So we take our plastic, we have to put it down in here, we can drop in, and you can see it'll drop through here into the blades you saw earlier. That'll shred the plastic, and then drop it down into this bin down here, which all of our plastic shards we go into. Those have been ready to use in our injection molds machines that we built. Before we begin shredding, we first clean the machine and remove any previous plastic flakes to reduce contamination. Then the safety is engaged, the machine is turned on, and the shredding begins. Afterwards, we record the weight and store the plastic for later use. This injection machine is our very own. We created it following Precious Plastics designs and using reclaimed materials from the Center for Automotive Research on OSU's West Campus. 
The basic operation is simple. The insulated barrel is heated to melt plastic that is then injected with the lever arm plunger into a mold. First, the machine is turned on. Then the temperature is set to the desired range using the PID controller. In this case, we are using HDPE, so we set the temperature to 220 degrees Celsius. Next, a plug is screwed onto the nozzle to prevent plastic flakes from falling out the end. The plastic flakes are then loaded into the hopper and fall down into the tube. We use the plunger to tamp the plastic flakes down. This ensures more uniform heating of the plastic and the maximum shot size for injection. While we wait about 20 minutes until the plastic has melted, we prepare the mold for injection. After 20 minutes has gone by and while wearing proper safety gear, the plug is removed and the mold is screwed onto the nozzle. This is done quickly to ensure no plastic leaks out of the nozzle. And finally, we are ready to inject the plastic into the mold. The plastic is injected by using the lever arm to push the plunger down until flashing is seen or resistance is met. Continuing to apply pressure after injection yields a smoother surface finish. After injection, the mold is unscrewed from the nozzle and then taken apart. You can see here that a lot of flashing has occurred. Using a drill press, we remove the injection sprue. Next, we pry apart the mold to reveal the product inside. Using tin snips, we remove some of the excess flashing. The excess remaining is removed by using a grinder and the remnants of the sprue are ground down. Here are some of the products that we have made using the injection machine. Now let's learn about the next machine. This is a Morgan Press, it's a vertical injection mold machine. We received this from the ISE department, it was broken and not operational. We went through, added the correct air to its supply, and replaced most of the plumbing and regulator work, and connected it all through to the point that we have a fully operational Morgan Press. First, the machine is turned on, and the desired temperature is set. Next, the nitrogen air canister is opened, and the input line is pressurized. Once the system is pressurized, the clamping and injection pressures are adjusted to control the platform and injection ram's movement. After those parameters are set, plastic is loaded into the machine and we are ready for operation. So to actually operate this, we're first going to engage our first safety. You'll hear that pneumatic hiss, meaning that everything's engaged. Brian's going to go ahead and close our second safety by keeping this flush with the magnetic contact reader. Here we're going to go ahead and push the clamp. It's going to pull our table flat upward and then push to inject. This will be by feel, about three seconds worth of injection until it pushes out. Then we're going to give it 30 seconds to cool. Here you can see the injection ram in action. By experimenting with the ratios of plastic types and colors, we can create products with interesting properties and unique patterns. For example, polypropylene imparts a shine on the injected product, and mixing white with blue produces a marbled effect. After injection, the platform is lowered, and after cooling, the product is removed. The process parameters are recorded and fine-tuned to reduce flashing and improve surface finish. We then finish the product by removing the sprue and the flashing. Now let's hear from some of our awesome members. Hi, my name is Matt Haight and I'm a former president of Buckeye Precious Plastic as well as a class of 2020 ISC graduate. My time with the organization had a variety of impacts on me. For one, it deepened my understanding of sustainability and opened me up to the opportunities available to contribute um, towards making a positive impact on the world. Additionally, it taught me a lot about how to start and grow a business. Um, having no precedent for what we were doing really allowed us to make mistakes, learn from them, and uh, fostered a entrepreneurial and creative spirit that I really enjoyed. And it all really contributed towards making Bucket Precious Plastic the most beneficial experience that I had at Ohio State. Hey guys, I'm Brian Will Polonia and I'm the current president for Buckeye Precious Plastics. I'm also one of the original founders of the club. 
this organization is a great opportunity for students to join and to develop soft skills and technical skills. And when I say soft skills, I'm talking about you know time management, project management, um, and communication especially. And when I talk about technical skills, I'm talking a little bit more about you know experience with injection molding, uh, experience with mold design and computer-aided design and computer-aided manufacturing. And these are skills that you can use and you can leverage uh, in interviews for an internship or co-op opportunity or even full-time opportunities. And there are skills that in the past I've used and I leverage um, and have helped me gain employment opportunities for project management with Smart Columbus or reliability engineering with uh, a chemical refining company called Line Delta Cell. So, you know, these, these skills are uh, beneficial in a variety of different industries. And with Buckeye Plastic being a relatively young organization, it's pretty easy for members to join uh, and find a place inside the organization and make a name for themselves and develop. Hi, I'm Cassidy Brozovich and I'm the current VP of Community Outreach and Service for BPP. By joining this club, I have been able to partake in volunteering within the community while also gaining important engineering experience in the lab. I think that this club is great for any major, whether that's business, engineering, or anything in between. Hey guys, I'm Luke Strevick. I'm the incoming Vice President of Engineering here. I'm a fifth year mechanical engineering student and I've been involved in Precious Plastic the last three years. I love Precious Plastic because you can really take on your passions and mix it with whatever your major is. So for me, sustainability has always been what I wanted to work in. I wanted to mix that with engineering, so I've been able to dive into recycling, build, design, build projects, and I've absolutely loved it. We have finance majors, we have business, we have uh, nonprofit majors who get to explore sustainability within their major as well. And it's been a really great opportunity to develop new leaders and new skills all throughout. Hey everyone, my name is John Schlichting. I'm the current VP of Internal Affairs for Buckeye Precious Plastic. I helped found this organization to pursue my passion for sustainability. This organization is a great opportunity for students to learn and apply new skills that go well beyond the classroom. Some of those skills that I've learned have included soft skills and hard skills. So some of those soft skills include writing a grant for the uh, 4C3 grant, uh, maintaining and updating our website, sending out a monthly newsletter, and making social media posts on our Instagram. Some of the more technical skills I've learned have included MIG welding, TIG welding, and just general metal working with angle grinders and chop saws, as well as the whole engineering design process of uh, using the precious plastic designs and just taking scrap metal and turning it into a machine that can recycle and create uh, recycled products. Um, this is a great atmosphere for students to learn, uh, try new things, uh, fail, and then overcome those failures. And I've gone through that process a lot with this organization. And it's really helped me grow as an individual and as an engineer. So definitely give us a chance. Check us out at BuckeyePlastic.org. And yeah, sign up.